I guess really the first serious test for whether I could do something like medicine was Rick Heldrick's organic class. He was pretty tough. We called him the boy wonder back then because he was really young when I was taking his course. He'd been there just for a couple of years, I think. Dr. Heldrick would go to the board with a piece of chalk. He didn't have any notes, he didn't have anything. He'd just go to the board and teach organic. I mean, it was just amazing how he could, just with a piece of chalk, teach such a difficult course. Chemistry for me really clicked, and during that year, uh, I really thought that I, you know, that I could do something like medicine. And I think that was a turning point that I you know, really thought I could do this. In my first year of medical school, I thought I wanted to do orthopedic surgery. But then I saw so much more and I knew after my residency that I wanted to be involved with taking care of patients. And to me, it always seemed more interesting to be able to do something that once you've worked it out in the lab, you can go straight to the clinic and see if it works in humans. Sickle cell disease is a disease that affects the red blood cells. So what ends up happening in individuals with sickle cell disease is that throughout their life, at any time, without any warning, the most frequent problem is pain, pain crises we call it. And it's about probably 80,000 uh, Americans uh, with sickle cell disease. In sickle cell disease, it's just the red blood cells that have this abnormal hemoglobin that makes them prone to clogging up the blood vessels. We just want enough of the donor so that we can take advantage of that difference in their half-lives and let the normal cells replace the sickle cells and we transplanted our first patient some years ago now, and it worked. And we've transplanted 21 now, and 18 are without sickle cell disease. And it's been amazing uh, for the patient. So you take a patient that has been in and out of the hospital week after week their entire life, and they're 25 years old now, and they don't know anything else but uh, going back and forth to the hospital, and that's gone. It's like, you know, I had this patient, he's like, I don't know what to do. And uh, for this one patient, it, it, it was quite a journey. He'll, I'm sure, be successful now that he can actually plan and carry out the plan without being interrupted over and over by a sickle cell crisis that winds him up in the hospital. It's, uh, it's unbelievable.